Hi, I'm Christian Brindle, and welcome to the Everything Medicare Podcast. What's up, everything, Medicare, Podcast Nation, this is Christian Brindle, wherever you are and however you might be listening to me today, thank you so much for taking the time. Today is Monday. Every single week, I bring you three podcast episodes where we discuss your Medicare, your Medicaid, your Social Security, and everything that has to do with that golden age called retirement, folks. If you're not familiar with my work or who I am, my name is Christian Brindle. I I run a company called Christian Brindle Insurance Services, just located outside of Salt Lake City, Utah. We specialize in Medicare health plans in 10 different states. And folks, um, we are getting deeper and deeper into, you know, the social distancing movement, um, the quarantines, some areas more quarantine than others, but for the most part, most places have been fairly, um, you know, quarantined and, you know, stay-at-home orders have been placed into effect um, as the cases for the coronavirus seem to surge. um, The death totals continue to go up, but that being said, it seems like um, the the, the trends of everything are starting to move downward from my understanding um, as far as new cases being made public. Um, we, I, I, I hopefully would like to say that it, it appears that we are hitting a bit of a plateau of sorts. Um, and that's always encouraging. You know, that's always encouraging anytime we're dealing with a, an unprecedented situation. I mean, let's be honest about this. This is a situation that I don't think any of us um, have ever seen in our lifetime. And basically, we just don't know what quite to expect because we don't really have much to compare it to. I think the closest thing we've probably ever had to this was the Spanish flu epidemic, and I believe that was in the 1910s, I want to say, or something like that. I don't know exactly. Um, Now, some people have predicted that the country will be reopened up, and you know, every, and they'll try to basically reopen up the country, we'll start going outside, you know, and things will start going back to normal, and then we'll have a second wave of cases, because, I mean, the, the virus hasn't gone, right? I mean, the reason why the cases are starting to plateau is because, for the most part, people are staying away from each other, um, and everybody's in their house, you know, just kind of staying away from everybody. Um, we don't exactly know what's going to happen, we're going to have to basically keep an eye on it um, and pay attention to it. But it's difficult for a lot of people. A lot of people have lost their jobs. A lot of people have lost, you know, tremendous amounts of their retirement through, you know, IRAs and stock market accounts or anything like that. Um, but essentially, we're, we're all in this together. You know, we're all in this together. Now, one question I've been getting asked quite a bit is during the pandemic, everybody's been doing everything over the phone. If you've needed to see a doctor, chances are it's probably been over the phone. My daughter's had a couple checkups for her pediatrician. We've been doing them over the phone. Um, You know, my wife had a doctor's visit recently done over the phone. Um, Everything is being done over the phone. You're not having people go into places very much because a lot of places are are not open. I'm sure Uber Eats is doing very well right now um, because a lot of fast food places are still open, but their drive throughs are open and not the lobbies and things like that. Um, But the question has come up, and that question is, should I buy an insurance policy through someone over the phone? Should should I be trusting of somebody? And there's, there's, there's a, this is, this is an an interesting question that I get, and I thought it'd, it'd be good to dedicate an entire show, an entire episode to talking about it, because the answer is yes and no. Let me explain. What I mean by this, folks, is if you're not going to buy an insurance policy at the moment over someone over the phone, the only other option you have is buying it online all by yourself, you know, and doing all of your own research, which is 
a lot of time. You know, it's not anything that, um, in my opinion, you should be doing because I think it can just be a big waste of time and you will still won't know as much as you would know by working with a competent professional agent. I'm, I've always been a big advocate um, of working with an agent on your plan. I don't think that there's downside to it, especially if you're working with a good one. There can be downside if you're working with a bad one and that's a topic and, a, and something that we want to talk about another day. I've done plenty of episodes about it over the years. Um, but that's basically your only other option because you're not going to get somebody to come to your house right now you're not going to be able to go into too many offices that I'm aware of. I mean, our office has been shut down for about a month now. And we've all been working from home. All of the new clients that we've been bringing on have been brought on over the telephone and, and virtually and electronically through email um, applications and, and um, telephone, uh, telephone enrollments and things like that because that's all we, we can do. You know, we really can't um, operate any other way with everything that's going on. Now, that being said, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because, you know, we were doing quite a bit of, you know, um, of, of applications with new clients, you know, that wanted to kind of do business with me and our, or my company over the phone before this. You know, we're licensed in 10 states. We're not going to fly out to each state to physically sit down and talk to each individual person. There's just no way. Um, so this is something that we've been used to before this. It's just people in our local market don't have the option of coming into the office and sitting down with us anymore. Everything we're doing has to be done over the phone. And so basically, you know, to kind of give you a short answer, the answer is, Yes, I mean, if you need an insurance plan, you're going to have to get it through somebody over the phone. Now, what you, should you look for? How can you avoid being taken advantage of? And how, worst of all, how can you avoid being scammed? Because it's not just to say that you should do business over the phone with anybody. There are some red flags you need to look for, and there's some things you need to make sure that you're doing and not doing when you're doing business with someone over the phone. I will break down exactly what those things are after I take a quick break. Hear from this week's sponsor. I'll be back in segment two. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for sticking with me through that break. This is segment two of episode 183 of the Everything Medicare podcast. So, folks, am I saying that you should always do business with someone over the phone? Well, I think, you know, as we enter farther into the 2020s and this new decade, I think, you know, it's going to be easier and easier to do so. I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think it's a good thing, and I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's just neutral. You know, it basically has more to do with who you're buying it from than it matters how you're buying it. And what I mean by that is you want to work with somebody that you can believe in. You want to make sure you're not getting scammed or anything like that. So this is my recommendation to people. Um, if you're doing business with someone over the phone and you're not familiar with who they are, let's say you filled out something online or you sent in a card or whatever the case might be, and they're calling you from this card. My first question for them would be, I would ask for the name of their company. Not aggressively. You don't want to seem like you're threatening them or anything like that. Nobody wants to do business with you if you're coming across too aggressive, but you know, just politely ask for the name of their company. And while you're talking to them, I assume most of you listening to this have a computer because how else would you be listening to this? Or a smartphone or some kind of means of accessing the internet. So then what you do from the next step is you're going to go to Google and Google their company name. See if they have a website. See if they have a Google um, business page. See if they're a legitimate business. The, and also see if anything negative comes up about them. This is how you can very quickly and effectively do some research right there on the spot. Look at their Facebook page. Do they have good Facebook reviews? Our Facebook reviews right now are five out of five. Over 30 plus reviews at this point for Christian Bruno Insurance Services. Go check it out. But I do believe, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if you look at an organization or a company that has an overwhelmingly tremendous um, array of bad reviews littered across them all over the internet, that should tell you something. And worse yet, if you can't find them, is even worse than that because then you don't even know if they're a real company and a real organization. That is vitally important. The second thing is you want to make sure that you're not just taking their word for it as far as benefits are concerned. 
I see people do this all the time. Um, they'll be talking to someone in a call center somewhere, and I don't mean to you know, attack call center agents. I'm not trying to pick on them. I'm just using it as an example. Um, I've been accused of picking on you know, call center agents before. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to use it as an example. Let's say you're talking to someone who's a call center agent that's nowhere near your state, that's maybe thousands of miles away from you, and they, just, and they take calls from all 50 states, respectively. They don't know the benefits in your market probably as well as someone that, you know, is in your market or somebody, you know, that works in just a couple of markets or whatever the case might be. They're not going to know because they just got off the phone the last call with someone that's three states over from you and the plan's going to be different everywhere. The benefits are going to be different everywhere with Medicare Advantage and Medicare drug coverage, uh, Medicare supplements they won't, but the prices are going to be different. So you always want to, in my opinion, every time we do a phone application with somebody, we try to do a screen share if the person's able to do so. It's very easy. It's a, basically, I send a link to them in an email. They click on the link, um, and then they're able to see my computer screen, and I show them the benefits. I don't just tell people about the benefits. I show them the benefits. And I think that's a good practice. I think if they're not able to do some form of screen share, it might cause a bit of a red flag. If they're not able to, though, but and they're able to send you the benefits right then and there in an email, so you can look them over for yourself and make sure that what they're saying is accurate, then those are good practices. I don't think that taking someone's word for it is ever a good idea because you, unless you're recording the phone call, um, which some of you might do, you have no way of proving that they said this or that, or they might not remember. They're like, I didn't say that. It's very important that you see everything in writing. Writing is all that matters. If you see something in writing that's different than something that they said, it should bear some kind of a red flag, in my personal opinion. Don't go anywhere, folks. Um, I have some final thoughts I'd like to share with you on this. Um, we have to take one more break, though, here from one more sponsor. See you in the next segment. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for sticking with me all the way to the end. Folks, um, to, to put this simply for you and to make it incredibly digestible, like I said in segment one, it does not matter how you're buying the plan. It matters who you're buying it from. It matters that it's the right plan. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter how you're doing it. Um, and it's so, so the best practice is to just kind of refresh is you want to see everything in writing if you can. You want to make sure that you, who you're doing business with, you can find them. I'm not, and I'm not talking about the insurance company there. They're um, suggesting that you purchase a plan with. I'm talking about their brokerage, their agency, them as an individual. You can Google Christian Brindle and find pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of documentation about me because I'm, I'm the real deal. I've been around a long time. I've done a lot, a lot of things in this industry. Um, we are a real business. We have a, we have ChristianBrindleInsuranceServices.com that's functioning frequently. We have a we have you know social media accounts. We have um, plenty of sites and information, and Google pages, and all kinds of things. So you can basically read up about us and do your homework and see that we are a real business. You'll see things about this show, the Everything Medicare podcast. You'll find our YouTube channel, and the information is never ending. If you are doing business with someone and you can't seem to find them with a Google search, that would give me a little bit of a cause to pause, quite frankly. Anyway, folks, um, thank you so much for um, spending some time with me. This is a little bit of a shorter episode, but I still think it's a goodie. And um, it's, a, it's, it's, a it's a question that I've been getting a lot of emails a lot about, getting asked about a lot. And any person that, that you're buying a plan through right now, you're doing it over the phone. You know, so I, I don't think that it's a bad thing. Um, you know, we've had every single new client, like I mentioned, since our office closed down, we brought them, um, we've done their plan for them by phone. It's more about who than how. Anyway, folks, thanks so much for taking the time and spending it with me. Um, if you're on Medicare or about to be on Medicare and you're just not sure if you're on the, on the right program for yourself, my company is licensed in the states of Utah, Idaho, Colorado, Oregon, Washington, California, Texas. South Carolina, Virginia, and Florida. Again, that's Utah, Colorado, Idaho, Oregon, Washington, California, Texas, South Carolina, Virginia, and Florida. Our office number is 801-255-5340, 801-255-5340. 
and ask for Christian. I'd be more than happy to talk with you folks. Until next time, hope you have a great um, start to your week. We'll be back with you on Wednesday.